am the sensei. I cannot be destroyed. Ow! Ah, screw this. Just watch the video and learn something. About Fights Episode 3. Photoshop Toolbox Boot Camp. Part 3. Hooah! Looks like another YouTuber getting back for more! Well, hallelujah. Looks like we need more people to know how to manipulate pixels of these. Whatever. Uh, what? Who said that? Who said that? Coming for this computer over here, sir! Yeah! Looks like we got a comedian here. Well, I like you. <laughs> you little maggot! Yeah, maggot! Mm. I got your name! I got your mouse! You will not laugh. You will not cry. Time for my revenge. Wow. You're gonna learn from my dad's videos. I will teach you. He'll teach you good, monkey. You would best shut your mouth and pay attention, or I will unscrew your head and cram my information right down your neck. Dismiss. Your squad is ready for you to lead them through. With Johnny 7 OMA, you charge! Fire grenade. Bullseye for Johnny 7. Watch out, tank! Fire anti armor shell. Fire anti tank rocket. Johnny 7's got him on the run. Johnny 7 fires bullets like a rifle, fires like a Tommy gun. Now it's a cap-firing pistol. You've won with Johnny Seven, the one-man army gun. It's seven guns in one. Let's count them. One is a grenade launcher. Two anti-armor gun. Three anti-tank gun. Four bullet-firing rifle. Five Tommy gun. Six anti-bunker gun. Seven cap-firing pistol. There's no other gun like it. To be sure, look for Johnny Seven, OMA, the one-man army by Topper. Welcome back to your Photoshop Toolbox Boot Camp Part 3. I see you've survived the experience so far, so let's see what you got. Joda, if you will please introduce the next set of tools. The pen tool. That is correct. It is the letter P for the pen tool. This is your primary vector point tool. It works in conjunction with the pass panel right here, and you can click and drag to make a anchor point baseline as you can see. Every point you have made is now recorded on your pass panel. I will hit delete twice, and then move on. The freeform pen tool. You got that one right, Sergeant Jonah. Shift and the letter P will access the freeform pen tool. It works unlike the first one in that you can click and drag and drag and drag and then it will trace the anchor points for you. As you can see here, it is not as smooth and elegant as I drew before. So if that's all you do, you might as well get out of my graphic arts core because you truly don't understand the nature of vectors. However, I will hit delete twice and give you recruits a chance to prove yourself in the next video. Add anchor point tool. Absolutely correct, Sergeant Jonah. The next tool is the add anchor point tool. However, the last three in the pen tool category do not have a keyboard shortcut, so be aware of that. The add anchor point tool allows you to go on a pre-established line right here with anchor point showing, and you can click and add an anchor point, add an anchor point, and add an anchor point. My God, you can add as many as you can cram into that line, son. Let's move on. The delete anchor point tool. Absolutely. The direct opposite of the add anchor point tool is the delete anchor point tool. It allows you to come in and click on pre-existing anchor points and delete them. My God, that's why it is called the delete anchor point tool. Get it through your thick head. The convert point tool. Yes, sir. The last of the pen tools is quite a sexy one. It is the convert point tool. It can take your normal average corner and click and drag to bend that into a smooth and elegant curve. A smooth and elegant curve as sexy as the curve. Well, you know what I mean. Let's just take a look at what it does, son. You're too young for that conversation. That's what it does. It will also take a curve and convert it back into a corner as you see me doing right here. So now you know, and now we can move on to the type tools in just a minute. 
The next set of tools on the toolbox is... Horizontal type tool. That is correct. The type tools, Jonah. It is T for type. My God, I hope they would get that right. If they hit R for type tool, I'd wring somebody's neck. It is T for the horizontal type tool. All you need to do is click and type out whatever you want. When you click on the move tool, that will set your type in its own distinguished type layer as you can see here. The vertical type tool. Yes, sir. If you hit shift and the letter T, you will activate the vertical type tool. I will click once over here and type in the name of my beautiful boy one more time. I will go to the move tool and move that out of the way so it's not bumping into his arm. And now you can see the horizontal type tool versus the vertical type tool. We will explore two more in just a minute. Horizontal type mask, sir. That is correct. Shift and the letter T will activate the horizontal type mask tool. It allows you to type in the shape of a selection area. So if I click and type in your name, I will activate my move tool. Now I have a selection. If I am on a selection tool, I can move said selection. Go down to the picture of your cute and adorable face. Go to my move tool and literally tear your name right out of your face. That is a bit disturbing as I have said before. So I will go to undo, hit command D and move on. The vertical type mask tool. Indeed. Shift and the letter T will activate the vertical type mask tool. So when I click right here and I type in the name one more time, I will go to my marquee tool. I will move this marquee and then with the move tool itself, I can tear out his name again. I will go to edit. Step backward, hit Command D to deselect and move on as usual. The path selection tool. That is quite correct, my son. If you are currently working with a path and you take the path selection tool and click, you will get all the anchor points on your line. Now remember it is A for the path selection tool. A as in an arrow, you numbskull. If you take the black arrow, you will get black anchor points. And a selected or dark anchor point is a movable anchor point. So the black arrow or the path selection tool allows you to move the entire freaking path. The direct selection tool. Yes, indeed, Jonah. The opposite of the path selection tool is shift and the letter A for the direct selection tool. If the dark arrow selects all the dark points on the path, the white arrow, also indicated by shift and the letter A, will activate individual anchor points. So if I click on that one, that is the only dark anchor point, and I can move it individually in relation to all the other anchor points on this line. And now you know. Now, since we are currently on the topic of vector points, Jonah, will you do me the honors, please? The rectangle tool, sir. That is correct, the rectangle tool. However, this is a rectangle made up of anchor points. It is U for uh, <laughs> vectors. <laughs> and if you click and drag as indicated right here, you will make a shape layer. When I click and drag and let go, a brand new layer is selected for me. If I take my white arrow and I click on these anchor points, you can see I can move them around as so. I am going to hit delete twice and move to the next tool in just a minute. The rounded rectangle tool. Absolutely. If you want rounded corners on your rectangle tool, you will hit shift and U for the rounded rectangle tool. I can type in a radius for the corner right up here. I will type in 45 and hit return. And now when I click and drag, I get rounded corners on that rectangle. It is still a shape base layer, so I could pull it apart with my white arrow as you can see right here. And I will get God knows what I'm going to get if I click and drag. But now you know, and as hideous as that is, I will hit delete twice so we can move to the next tool. The ellipse tool. That is correct. Shift and you will access the ellipse tool. And now that you know about rectangles, now you can draw ellipses. If you hold the shift key, you can draw a perfect circle, but I think you already knew that, numbskull. 
So I will go to step backward two times and move on. The polygon tool. My lordy lord, that is correct. Shift and the letter U will access the polygon tool. So if I come up here and I type in the number of sides at eight and I hit return, I can click and drag and get an octagon as you can see right there. I am going to get command Z to go back a step so we can move on. The line tool, sir. Shift and you will select the line tool. All you need to do is come up here and type in the weight of your line. I will type in a 10 and hit return. And now I simply click and drag to create a shape layer line. That's all you need to know. I'm going to go to step backward and move to the custom shape tool next. The custom shape tool. Well, howdy do, that is correct. The custom shape tool is indicated by shift and the letter U for uh, <laughs> vector tools. Now, what you can do is come up here to the list of shapes that are available. And if you don't like them, you can click the pop up and choose from any number of shapes. Or you click all. I will click OK, and now I have a very large list of custom shape tools to click and drag from. So if I take this butterfly and I click outside, I can simply click and drag to create a butterfly of my choice. And if I hold the shift key, I will not distort said butterfly. As you can see right there, it is made up of anchor points, and those anchor points can be clicked and dragged and manipulated to a freakishly large butterfly like you would see in the likes of a Godzilla movie, for God's sake. I'm going to go to step backward a few times to get rid of that offending shape, and we will move on to part four in the next video series. Stand up, face front. Keep your brains clear and unoccupied so you can learn to be a part of my beloved graphic arts core. Now move out and create art. Hup, 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 move it, move it, move it, move it, move it. Action. Looks like another YouTuber can't came back for more. Action. I will teach you. You teach a good maggot. <laughs> Action. Uh, no. No. Dismiss. You moved again. Everything, everything, that's all, folks!